what originally attracted to me was the uh, the cover, the original cover of the book, that grizzled old guy on the cover. And I was looking for a project to uh, direct my father in, Lloyd Bridges. And I saw that guy and I said, oh, my dad could play that grizzled old guy. And uh, then I, I read the book and I was knocked out by the book as a children's book. I was wanting to make a film that my kids could see. But also, as an adult, I just loved the story. Uh, the poetry of it was kind of had a magical quality, and I thought it would be an easy book to get made, but I was proven wrong, you know. Even though it was, you know, taught in schools, over 12 million copies sold, uh, it was also on the banned books list. Uh, so it was quite, you know, a controversial uh, book. My understanding from these interviews and talking to Jeff is that he'd been trying to get it off the ground for 20 years for his kids when they were children. Uh, they were fans of the book, and so I think it was something that he wanted to direct um, with his father to play the giver. So his kids could kind of go, go see a movie like this. Um, of course, they're much older now, and he's gone through many scripts and many producers um, until the Weinsteins and Walden Media really started to push this thing forward. Asher, the beginning of the story is a little bit of uh, the round peg in the square hole of this community. He's kind of uh, someone who doesn't quite fit in. He's a bit of a goofball and uh, a little, a slightly a rule, a rule breaker. But then as Brenton's character starts standing in opposition to this community and what it stands for and uh, start, starts moving against it, Asher kind of becomes uh, a tool for the community, for these rules, for this limitation. I play Fiona and she's a nurturer. She takes care of babies. And Fiona's a lot of first for Jonas. So the first time Jonas sees color, he sees it in Fiona's hair. And um, the first time Jonas discovers love, he feels it for Fiona. She's a lot of the reason why he's driven to, to find elsewhere and to rebel against this community. Working with Meryl was I mean, it was absolutely incredible. She was someone who I've, you know, admired and watched for pretty much my entire life, and and uh, you know, always wanted to act with her. And she was everything I'd hope her to be. So I think everyone in this project was just really warm and really down to earth and grounded and cool. And um, especially Jeff, he he knows how to enjoy life and have fun and. He always told me not to take life too seriously and to make sure to enjoy it. You know, it's, it was a nice parallel to have those moments working with Jeff because the giver gives me a lot of these memories which inspire Jonas's journey. And Jeff did much the same for me. You know, watching him work is like, um, it's a dream come true. You know, those actors, it's one, one thing to watch them on screen and you're very familiar with their performances and their face and, and whatever, but to watch them prepare is a whole different beast. I think it's great to have that kind of perspective from an actor and such a great actor like Jeff. Um, and he, him, both him and Meryl would make suggestions that have nothing to do with their characters. It wasn't like they just came to set to say their lines. They they added so much to this to this movie. They would say, I don't think Fiona should say that. I don't think Asher should say that. Um, I think maybe they should be wearing this. You know, they had little notes that really, I think, helped move this movie along. Lois uh, was such a, an important element in the whole process of making the movie. I'm uh, happy that she was uh, you know, so supportive and uh, uh, in one of her first, um, her first statements to us was uh, that it wasn't important for her that we matched every fact of the book but that the spirit of the book remained intact and uh, I'm happy to say that um, it, it has, and her, you know, that's her opinion and mine as well. And I'm really pleased with the way it came out. Being a lover of the book, I wanted to make sure that people who uh, love the book as well would be happy with it. And um, I think, uh, I'm pretty certain they will be. There's so many uh, important questions brought up by this movie and by the story, um, and I think that a lot of these questions, as what happens with good art, is it doesn't answer all of them and people are going to find their own answers. It's still relevant to today, I think. Lois is brilliant and I think she kind of subtly puts in this message that we need to appreciate life and we need to appreciate our freedom and the fact that we can see color and feel things and choose to do what we love and 
as kids growing up, our parents tell you to appreciate things, but we don't really, really understand it, and we don't really appreciate it for that moment that it is. But I think, um, I think after reading this book and going through a journey like this with, with Jonas, kids are really, it really hits them. I feel like after reading the script and watching the movie and reading the book, it just, it kind of hits you. You know, the movie takes place in some future time, but it's very reflective of, of what's going on now with our own technology and so forth and the power of that. And our ethics really haven't caught, caught up with our technology. I think that's uh, important to question that. We have been begging for a musical episode. I want to do a musical episode so badly, mainly because I want the, to see other cast members singing as well. <laughs>